Welcome to the 2021 Art of Goodwill broadcast, brought to you by Goodwill Industries of Kentucky. You've seen art before, but not like this. The Art of Goodwill is our annual showcase of exquisite art made with repurposed materials from our Goodwill stores. Once a year, we commission a group of artists to help us celebrate the value of second chances, which is embedded in the mission of Goodwill Industries of Kentucky. Their interpretation of art made with repurposed materials is a reflection of the work we do at Goodwill to provide second chances to people and materials many thought had lost their value. Stay with us throughout this broadcast to watch the world-renowned sculptor from Kentucky, Ed Hamilton, receive the very first Goodwill Hand Up Award. And be prepared to be blown away by the art created by the artist he hand-selected for this year's Art of Goodwill residence. You'll also want to make sure your bids are ready when this year's auction opens. But first, let's hear from Amy Luttrell, CEO of Goodwill Industries of Kentucky. A lot of people believe that Goodwill exists to operate retail stores. And we do have a lot of retail stores. We have 67 across the Commonwealth. And so we're glad that people are aware of those stores. But what they don't realize many times is that our stores are really only a means to an end for us. So what is that end goal for Goodwill? Why does Goodwill exist in the Commonwealth of Kentucky? We exist to assist people to find their own pathway out of poverty. That's why we have those stores and that's why we do everything that we do. We know that poverty is such a, a corrosive condition for people to be in and it leaves them really in survival mode. So we exist, Goodwill dedicates all of our efforts to offering people a pathway out of poverty. Usually the people who come to us have a good number of barriers that they need to overcome if they're ever going to get out of poverty. We offer things like basic skills training that employers all say that they need. We offer things like financial management for people to learn how to manage their money. We also offer assistance with things like transportation, housing, legal issues. But we know that we don't have everything that people need if they're going to get out of poverty and overcome all of their barriers. So what we have chosen to do, especially over the last few years, is to develop very strong partnerships with other organizations that have services and resources that Goodwill doesn't have. We see people who have a lot of barriers. They may not have worked in a long time. They may have a ragged work history. They may and quite likely do have a criminal background. But we also see from those people how motivated they are to build a new life. And once they believe that they really do have an, a realistic opportunity to build a new life, there is no stopping them. To see them succeeding, doing things they never thought they could do, getting back together with their children, rebuilding relationships, buying houses, getting promotions. Many of you, probably most of you, have brought bags of clothing and household goods to our stores. Many of you who've shopped in our stores have rounded up at the register. Many of you have been volunteers, you've been our partners, or you've supported us in other ways. We take all of that and we turn it in to those opportunities for your friends and your neighbors and even your family members. And we know helping them turn their lives around solves many of the problems that Kentucky experiences and it really improves the quality of life for all of us. So that is the value proposition that Goodwill brings to Kentucky. We asked world-renowned sculptor Ed Hamilton to hand-select the artists for the 2021 Art of Goodwill Residency Program. And these are the artists he selected. When you asked me, I, I, I kept thinking, that, wait a minute now, who, who, who would fit this? Neil, such a great up-and-coming artist. I've seen her work, I've collected her works. I looked at her because she is so in tune with community and what she does, too. See? I personally feel like, you know, the fight for my art and creativity and just continuing and just to be my best, like, it's to, you know, be a part of his legacy. I pray that I'm able to be that kind of shining light to someone in the future. 
Then I saw Charles Rice. I said, oh, shoot, Charles got some stuff going on. Let me contact my boy and see what he going to see what he want to be a part of this situation, you know. When I first heard that Ed Hamilton had sele hand selected me, I kind of cried in my head because I know how much Ed Hamilton has meant to this community. Ed is such a great role model. He loves art. He's always coming to events. He's always supporting young artists. And the bottom line is he's cold. Like, he's one of the greatest sculptors ever. And that's a national perspective. So to have him set, hand select me, uh, was probably one of the biggest achievements of my life. And then all I had to do was look out my door across the street and I'm like, hey man, she's got some, she does some nice thing. Maybe she'd like to be involved in this. His work speaks volumes. I mean, the Civil War monument in DC, the Abraham Lincoln downtown that you can, you know, I see kids climbing on. He is such an honest and caring an encouraging person. And then you got Duffy involved, because I'm always promoting him, you know, we've we, 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 we been so like this, you know. 1971, I pick up the paper and there was a, a, a small article off to the side that said that, uh, that the Louisville Art Workshop has a new director. And it was a, a, a picture of Ed. He was real skinny and he had a real huge afro and these big glasses and whatnot. We would sit in the, uh, in the evenings and we talk about like making it. And we don't, you know, we say, man, we ain't never had a dinner. Nobody, nobody, nobody wants this stuff. Well, after he got that first public piece, that, that book of tea, that career just went, I mean, it just went straight to the top. And, you know, that, that people found out what he could do. A young artist, a, a, a seasoned artist, artists of ceramics and i thought all they gotta do is go to goodwill and start picking up some they, 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 they'll have fun looking looking through these things you know as that as i did well hello my name is lanaya roberts i am a trained painter but i like to consider myself an artist who allows for the medium to choose her. Typing myself is something that I feel like has been done throughout my life. You know, as a plus size black woman, I feel like I've been boxed in a lot. And I feel like I am nowhere near capable of being in a box. So I'm really excited to see myself grow and to see what other forms of art come my way. When I was in the fifth grade, the last day of school, I saw my art teacher. He was just like, can you promise me something? Never stop creating art. And I was just like, yes sir, I won't ever. And for a period of time I did. And it really affected, you know, my confidence and how I saw myself. But then I went to school and I got into that art class my junior year of high school. And my art teacher was like, go to this art show. Ed Hamilton's gonna be here. You need to meet him. Do this art program. This is gonna be a great experience, et cetera, et cetera. And from that, um, my life began to change. This project has been so special to me because I feel like it's given me the opportunity to believe again in the creative process. And I was thinking, you know, just celebrating the fact that you guys are moving into the West End. I could talk about my personal experiences, you know, different monuments or buildings that were, you know, that are staples in the community. But nothing was ringing the bells of my heart. I had called over my studio mate, Charisma. I was just like, Charisma, I was just like, can you come over here and let me know if this looks tacky? She was just like, why don't? You just cut the jeans and pull them over the frames like they're boards for canvas. I felt the bell started ringing. So afterwards, I put up the canvases and I made the shapes that you see right here. That's when I had sketched on the outline of the faces and the words. And then from there, I began painting. I grew up in the West End. I grew up by Shawnee Park. Every time I go into the West End, it's just so gorgeous and so reminiscent of my childhood. And I was also simultaneously thinking about Ed Hamilton, who has, you know, chosen me for this project and has inspired me so much. 
I wanted to, to, to find a way creatively to tie those things together. You know, one of the things that has inspired me so much throughout my life is driving through downtown. I remember as a kid, I would look at the big posters um, that were are displayed on buildings downtown. And I would always dream, like, I want to do something great enough to be honored by my city. And as I've grown older and became more aware, I realized that I don't see a lot of people who look like me. Not only that look like me, but come from the background that I come from, that come from the West End, who has really shaken up like Louisville in the world. And I thought of many people, but I chose Councilman Ja'Cory Arthur and Mrs. Samika Palmer because they touched me on a personal level. Hours upon hours just meditating on these individual spirits and their strength and their power and trying my best to translate that onto canvas through paint has been such an incredible experience. We all know deep down inside where we come from. And so I felt like it, it, it brought a sense of importance to the words West End. It just gets me excited to continue the series after this project. I'm Amy Elswick. I am uh, generally a ceramic artist, which is uh, what I do my full-time work in. As time has gone on, my mind wanders more and I'd like to experiment with more things, so this has been good for that. I will say that I always had a, a desire and interest in art, but I didn't particularly grow up in an artistic family. I didn't grow up taking art classes. Um, in fact, I remember one class I really hated in elementary school that dealt with contour drawing. Awful. I have been full-time making ceramics since 89, on my own, as my own business. You know, I had grand ideas at some points, like, ooh, I could have this empire and could do this and that and that with, but actually I'm happier just working by myself and making things that people enjoy. I'm more of a craft artist. I feel like it's, it's a lot about technique and how things go together and how you put it together and what the components are, rather than, than there's thinking art, which is what I was able to produce for my Goodwill art, which was more emotionally satisfying. I learned a lot uh, because A, I didn't know what I was doing at the beginning, and making art from repurposed materials is, uh, it's kind of natural, it's like, there's so much stuff in this world. We don't need all this stuff. We do not need all this stuff. So it's good to repurpose some of it. The pieces I created are pieces that came to me after several struggles of trying to figure out what I wanted to make. In the middle of the night, I had all these ideas. Like, I could make this or I could make that. And then it just, it just kind of came to me what I was going to make, which was um, an American flag out of broken glass because that's just kind of how I feel. Currently, I feel like there's a lot of rough and sharp edges in our country. I'm sad, I'm sad that everybody has to be so mad all the time. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I, I just wanted to express my thoughts on America now and it's not like I'm not happy. The second piece, um, I, I think it came from fabric at Goodwill too. I was, still had this flag. And then there's just gun violence that just crops into everyday life. And I had a gun held to my head when I was in middle school, I guess. So I, I, I've hated guns. I see no need for them. Why are people dying? Why can I look up LMPD's open records site and see six pages of open homicides from just this year. When you look up gun violence, all you get is statistics. Statistics, statistics, statistics. I'm like, where are the people? I was gonna have 50 stars for 50 states and um, I thought I'll do them all, one from each state. But it's like, well, what about these people that died in a school shooting, and this and this and this and this. And so it's really random because there's just 
there's gun deaths in every state for every reason, and I, 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 you know, I hope they end up somewhere where people can see them, and hopefully they'll, I hope it makes people think, I don't know, what do they think about this country, what do, you know. My name is Charles Rice. I'm a fine artist, uh, born and raised here in Louisville, and I uh, consider myself a contemporary artist as well. When I was younger, uh, you know, they had these uh, children's books. Every children's book had this one white blank page in them. My mom would start to notice, say, hey man, you got pictures in all of these fronts of these books. I'm like, well, we were poor. We didn't have white paper laying around, so I just used the book. So I showed her, I said, mama, this is what I like to do. And that's when she started to take me around the place. I was about five. That was the only thing that I gravitated to. Well, Charles Rice as an artist, 2021 is somebody who just is in touch with the culture and the history of, of Louisville and national history. So I've uh, settled down here in Louisville and opened up Color Gallery, and um, I've just been able to create things that are relevant for the time. My niche, I think, would be considered the awareness that I have around my, about my surroundings. Like, I really pay attention to what's going on, and, and I really try to create a product. I'm at the phase where I do art, but I do it for the people. I don't just do it for myself. I do it for the people, so I kind of pay attention to what people might want. Graduated from college, I did a few years at Walt Disney. I came back and I went into ENS Gallery, which is the largest African American gallery in the country, to see all those black artists, to see those prices on those art, on the art, and that's when it changed. Say, oh, you know, I don't have to starve. I can really eat off of the artwork. Now, to this day, I take a Monday or Tuesday and go to five or six Goodwills to find furniture, canvases, frames. So Goodwill's always been one of the corporations, the companies that has been uh, a part of my life even before. So when I heard of this residency, it was a great opportunity to showcase my work, knowing that Goodwill has been a, a valuable entity in what I do. It's really nothing new to me. It was just, uh, just something that to do it on the scale I did was, uh, was a blessing. Well, the pieces I created for the Goodwill, I wanted to represent Louisville in one, and that's why I chose Muhammad Ali, who is considered the, the greatest. So I wanted the city to, to recognize, so I chose that. And then because of the social climate right now with the, with the incidents with social injustice, injustice, I wanted to create something that was representative of the time. So that's why I chose the more uh, provocative piece where it's kind of uh, the plight of what's going on with the African Americans right now. When we decided at Goodwill Industries of Kentucky that we wanted to create a Hand Up Award, there was no question about who would be the first recipient. Ed Hamilton, he's been for years a world-renowned sculptor, artist, who's done incredible work that's been received by audiences far and wide. Ed has used his platform to educate people about so many important pieces of our history that uh, have been overlooked or undervalued. And he's used his art, he's used his voice, he's used his platform uh, to tell stories that are so much bigger than he is. Not only a treasure in the African American community, but nationwide artists recognize him and value him for what he's contributed to communities all around this country. He's rooted right here where Goodwill Industries of Kentucky is headquartered. As a matter of fact, his office is right around the corner from one of our main stores on Broadway. He visits our stores frequently, and he uses many of the things that he buys in our store in his art. So you never know when you might see an Ed Hamilton piece, when you might see something from Goodwill Industries of Kentucky. What, what Goodwill is about is about helping people. Well, you know, in a conversation, we talked about a hand up, not a hand out. Mm -hmm. And that has really, it really stuck with me. I chose, um, a particular stone, it's an alabaster, the boulder type of uh, alabaster. And I wanted that color because it, it, it sort of reminds you of uh, the color of a heart 
there's a man and a woman. They're back to back. It's called a Janus. On one side, you have the woman holding up another woman with a small child. And so this, this woman is, is helping up someone that is a little less fortunate. This piece is it's sort of unusual. It's not abstract. It is not super representational. It's, it's, uh, it's both. Ed Hamilton, uh, I'm a sculptor. Been in my sculpting studio here since 1978. As an artist, we always like to scavenge. And so I have always gone to the Goodwill stores. I might not know what I'm looking for, but if something piques me, you see what I mean? Or I might be looking for something specific. You know, I might be looking for an old speaker or an old cabinet. And when I started doing my figurative works in full form, I said, why do I have to actually model a shoe? When it's life scale, so I go to Goodwill and I find shirts or suit coats. The Martin Luther King piece in Newport News, Virginia. All the shoes of those figures walking out of that wall came from Goodwill. Martin Luther King's coat came from Goodwill. But I found in Goodwill the repurposing that I could really utilize in my works. On the side of the building back here before the neighborhood changed, there was old houses back here. And there was a gentleman by the name of Bootsy. He would go junking and come by and we'd come in the studio in the morning sometime and there'd be stuff at the front door that he left us might, we might be able to use. And so we were just, we were just having fun. Man. And it was really about the community, you know. And what do you give to the community? Do you, do you uh, just stay within your own little area of place and, 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 and do your thing and think you the greatest thing that ever happened to art? You know, no, it don't work that way. It's, it's what's within you. It's how you've been raised. I come from working class people. I come from a, a, a father who opened up his own business after he got back from the World War I on 6th and Walnut Street. I come from a mother who said, I could do anything, you know. Uh, so I took that literally, I guess. And so when I got into my art thing, I was just doing it because it was in me, I wanted to do it. I wasn't doing it for anybody else but me, and I was good at it. After I graduated from art school and I found the old Louisville Art Workshop, I saw them being very uh, protective and wanting me to be a part of that organization and learn mm. through what they do for the community. There's nothing new under the sun, but we all have something to give to each other, you see. It was apparent. Just like they had me around them at the old Low Light Workshop, I needed to have them around me here so we could all function together and to show the community what we do and to teach our little black children that walk by this place what they do in there. Or, or can I do that? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that. You can be somebody. <laughs> I know. I like to tell the story that when I go to Kroger's or sometime, somebody out here will whisper, and that Ed Hamilton. And, and I turn around and say, he, is he here? Where? <laughs> so that, that's what it's all about. For every sculptor out here in this world, I'm just one of many. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not the best. There are more, there, there, there are others that are, are even better than me. I know it, I've seen it. Well, I wouldn't be anybody had I not grown up on, uh, in the heart of the Black Business District at 6th and Walnut Street. That's where I get my who I am, okay? Because I've seen it. I've seen, I listen, I've seen. That's the community that you were involved in, you know. Businesses, churches, you know, the YMCA's, the, the library. All of this is a part of my DNA, you see? And that's who I am. And, and, and that's why it's so important that, that, that we recognize how important community is to people, you see. Without community, where are we? At Goodwill Industries of Kentucky, we're proud of the good that happens in our 67 retail stores all around the state. But in case you didn't know, we're so much more than just our stores. Come let me show you. 
One of our biggest projects is our upcoming move to West Louisville. That's right, Goodwill Industries of Kentucky is relocating to 28th and Broadway. Not only are we relocating our headquarters here, but we plan to co-locate with community agencies and partners that will serve this community in a holistic way you've never seen before. So stay tuned because this 20 acre site behind me will soon be transformed into a bright beacon of hope that will serve West Louisville in a new transformative way. And in a location near you, we're opening resource centers. That's right. Goodwill is partnering with community agencies from Pikeville to Paducah to serve communities where we are vested as an agency. So in our resource centers, we are providing hope, having only positive expectations for people who come into our centers hoping to rebuild their lives. And we don't do it alone. We do it in partnership with agencies who have the same heart and mission as Goodwill to serve people in this community who are in need of a second chance. And we're investing in unprecedented amount of resources, helping men and women throughout the state of Kentucky get their records Sponge. We're helping them overcome the problems that they faced in the past and we're preparing them for a beautiful, bright future. And through our Cars to Work and Last Mile to Work programs, we're helping men and women all around the state of Kentucky overcome transportation barriers that prevent them from securing good quality employment opportunities. And because we're a second chance employer, we often use many of our retail stores, like our new outlet here on Preston Highway in Louisville, Kentucky, to hire hundreds of men and women who would otherwise have extreme difficulty finding a place to work. And on this same site, we're planning to open Kentucky's very first adult high school. It's called an Excel Center, and in the fall of 2022, it will open to serve hundreds of men and women who have once upon a time dropped out of high school and are now looking to come back to earn their high school diploma. We'll provide wraparound supports and services that will make it hard for them to fail and we'll put them on a pathway to prosperity by preparing them for the world ahead. And that is just a glimpse of all that's happening at Goodwill Industries of Kentucky. We have 1,800 employees around the state who wake up every day with one purpose and that's to make the Commonwealth of Kentucky a better place to live. We ask you to be a part of what we're doing by visiting us at goodwillky.org to learn all the other things that are happening around the state to help people live better lives and improve the communities where they live.